It's a good afternoon. Here are my disclosures. So as you can see, I have been given the task to review for you some uh, important practical issues relative to the prescription of adjuvant trastuzumab. So I hope in the next 15 minutes to summarize for you the data that we have obtained regarding the optimal duration of adjuvant trastuzumab, whether we should favor the concomitant or the sequel, sequential administration with chemotherapy. Do we think that we have preferred chemotherapy partners? And lastly, I will say a few words about a new way of administering trastuzumab, which is subcutaneous trastuzumab. You are probably very familiar with the design of these uh, now quite old uh, registration trials conducted more than 10 years ago. Uh, the two large American trials using a backbone of entracycline and taxane, the BCRG006 international study with this interesting non entracycline containing arm, HERA, a large international trial, and PAXO4, a French study uh, using the sequential administration that allows you to choose your preferred chemotherapy regimen and give it upfront. And finally, the very elegant and original trial conducted in Finland where uh, investigators have elected to give uh, the taxane and trastuzumab together upfront for a short period of time. To gain some time, I'm just going to summarize what we learned with all these trials. This is a recent uh, meta-analysis conducted by the Cochrane Group. Uh, that takes into account all these trials plus two small neoadjuvant trials involving close to 10,000 women. The median follow-up on average is about three years. And you see the very significant reduction in the risk of a disease-free survival event and a very significant reduction in the risk of death. It is also remarkable that we now have, since the last three months, a uh, very robust and long-term overall survival results on some of these old trials. So this is the combined analysis of NACBP B31 and N9831, showing at 10 years a 9% absolute improvement in overall survival favoring the trastuzumab-containing arms. We also heard at the ESMO meeting and then also at the San Antonio meeting about um, the updated results of one-year trastuzumab in the HERA trial. Now we have eight-year median follow-up, and you see that we have a very robust uh, reduction in the risk of death in spite of a high rate of crossover in this trial because in 2005, more than 50% of the women in the control arm selectively crossed over to receive trastuzumab. Of course, there is a small price to pay for this uh, remarkable activity, and this is, of course, the risk of symptomatic congestive heart failure, which remains pretty low, even with younger follow-up, but which can range, of course, between a very low 0.4% rate up to a 4% rate, depending on the regimen that you choose. First question, short versus long administration. <clears throat> well, you know, there was a fantastic rationale in the initial trials to go for the one-year administration, and the rationale is that this is the time it, take, it takes for the Earth to go around the sun. So this was the fantastic rationale for the one year. Of course, you know that our colleagues in Finland uh, developed this uh, interesting, very short regimen, unfortunately in a very small study. But the results of that trial, I, th I think, stimulated the interest in looking for shorter duration of trastuzumab. And you see the huge efforts now which are going on. So to, to the left, you see some large trials now investigating the three months duration and comparing it to the 12 months duration, the large sold trial, the short heart trial. To the right, you see some national efforts in France, in UK, in Greece to go for six months instead of one year. And of course, HERA was the only trial that, rightly or wrongly, investigated a longer duration, a duration of two years. 
So let me report the results of uh, two of these trials, which became available in the last four months. First, uh, the French study uh, called FAR, um, which uh, is a very, very pragmatic trial in which uh, French patients received uh, chemotherapy with trastuzumab given either sequentially or concomitantly according to the preference of the physician and there was after that randomization to stop trastuzumab or to continue in order to complete one year. The trial was uh, reported uh, at the ESMO conference first and in San Antonio second and as you are well aware, the trial failed to demonstrate non-inferiority for six months of trastuzumab. In fact, what you can see on the graph uh, shown to the right uh, is the confidence interval of the FAR trial around the point estimate for disease-free survival in the six months arm. And what you see uh, just below is the confidence interval and the point estimate that the trial should have shown if indeed six months of trastuzumab could be considered non-inferior to 12 months. Does that mean that we definitely have an answer that six months is inferior? I don't think so. I think we will need the data from the other trials. The problem, of course, is that uh, it's very hard to de-escalate treatment. You have to go for non-inferiority statistical designs. It's a nightmare. And I personally think we will need a meta-analysis of all the trials. At that time, most likely, there will be a new standard of care, dual her to blockades. So this tells me that this question of duration must be incorporated in the initial design of the pivotal trials. So here is the current situation. So the sole trial has recruited slightly more than 50% of the patients. They still need 1,300 patients. Short her is uh, closed, I believe. The Persephone trial, uh, I think, is continuing, as far as I can tell. Uh, the Greek investigators had tremendous problems of recruitment, and they decided to stop now at 500, and they will present results this year. The HERA trial, as I told you, um, was the only trial that investigated a longer duration of trastuzumab. Remember that in this trial, trastuzumab was given sequentially uh, with chemotherapy. So the conclusions are only valid for the sequential administration. And you have seen the results uh, recently. So uh, in this landmark analysis that took slightly over 3,000 patients who were alive and disease-free after one year of trastuzumab, we can see here that there is absolutely no advantage for going for the longer trastuzumab duration, which is in blue, compared to uh, the one-year duration, which is in red. So the hazard ratio is 0.99, the p-value is 0.8. And same, the same conclusion, of course, for survival. Interestingly, uh, with the two-year administration, we did not see any increase in the severe cardiac events, the symptomatic cardiac events, as shown on the left, but we did see an increase in the secondary um, mildly symptomatic or asymptomatic cardiac events. And also, an interesting observation you can make out of this graph is that after you stop trastuzumab, it is extremely rare that a patient is going to experience a cardiac event. Concurrent versus sequential administration, you know that there is a single study that prospectively investigated this question, uh, the N9831 trial, coordinated by Edith Perez, a large study of 3,500 women. At five years median follow-up, you see the results. So the sequential arm was better than the control arm. But when you look at the comparison between the sequential administration and the concurrent administration, there is a trend favoring the concurrent administration, but the p-value was not statistically significant. There is no difference in survival. Here are the curves suggesting that concomitant administration could be better. Probably the trial should have been much larger and better power to see this small advantage. Now, here are some uh, 
probably dangerous subgroup analysis from the FAR study, but it's interesting to see that if you are going to go for a shorter duration of trastuzumab, this could potentially be of very little impact when you choose concomitant administration, but could perhaps be detrimental when you go for the sequential administration. Again, we have to be cautious and we will have to see if this is also seen in the other trials. And this, there was also this interesting uh, subgroup analysis by schedule of administration and hormone receptor status, suggesting that the only subgroup at the end of the day that might be harmed by the short duration, the six months, are the patients with hormone receptor negative disease where you choose to give trastuzumab in a sequential fashion. Again, I'm just telling you that these are a subgroup analysis that will need confirmation. In the HERA trial, we also saw a phenomenon that not many of us did expect, and this is this apparent transient benefit of the two-year administration over the one-year administration in the hormone receptor negative population. I don't think any one of us can find a, an explanation for this. And so when you analyze all these data, you could think that there is perhaps an interaction between schedule of administration, duration of administration, and hormone receptor status, and that this should perhaps be investigated further. Which chemotherapy partner? That's not going to be very difficult. So you know that in all the trials, almost all the trials, we have used entracycline and taxanes. In the Finnish study, there was a head-to-head -head comparison between vinorelbin and docetaxel. You know also about the non-entracycline arm of BCRG006. So for the Finnish study, it looks like vinorelbin performs slightly worse than docetaxel because at five years follow-up, the benefit was no longer seen in the vinorelbin subgroup. Again, the trial is small, and this could perhaps be just a chance finding. Nevertheless, you know, you have to tell your patients that perhaps vinorelbin, which is a nice drug, is not the optimal choice in a curative setting. BCRG006, finally published, uh, you know that the TCH arm um, had a very good outcome. The curve is just below the entracycline uh, trastuzumab arm, and both arms are better than the control arm. Nevertheless, we are left with this problem. So TCH is less toxic, in particular for cardiac events, but we cannot rule out that it is perhaps slightly less effective. And remember, the trial was not designed to compare these two arms. These two arms were compared to the control arm. So we'll never get an answer. And for that reason, I think many breast cancer experts agree that, of course, TCH is the preferred regimen if cardiac risk factors are present, perhaps also if patients are at relatively low risk, small tumors, no negative disease, while the entracycline-based arm is preferred if there are no cardiac risk factors and the patient is at moderate high risk. Finally, which partner for the small tumors? You know that the academic community has been unable to run randomized trials in HER2-positive small tumors. We couldn't get funding. So I think that the initiative of the Dana-Farber is an interesting one because they are conducting these very large phase two trials where in this case, they delete the intracycline, they just go for weekly paclitaxel and trastuzumab in a population that is at rel relatively low risk, including small tumors. They have entered 400 patients. The trial was not stopped by the IDMC, which is a good sign, and the results I think will be uh, shown in 2013, this year. A few words to finish about subcutaneous trastuzumab. Uh, I suppose you are aware that this is a possible new formulation of the drug that, of course, makes a lot of sense from a pharmacokinetic point of view. So what you see here is a simulation of the subcutaneous administration in red compared to uh, the three-weekly administration in blue and the weekly administration in green. 
So what would be the advantage? Well, of course, the advantage of the sub-Q would be that you could give this every three weeks. There would be no need for a loading dose. It's a five-minute administration, and perhaps the patient can do that at home. So there has been an interesting trial conducted by the company called ANA to make a head-to-head -head comparison between the sub-Q administration and the IV administration in the context of a neoadjuvant trial where patients received four cycles of docetaxel together with trastuzumab in either form, followed by four cycles of uh, intracycline-based treatment with the continuation of trastuzumab, then surgery, and then, of course, completion of adjuvant trastuzumab. The primary endpoint was to show non-inferiority of the subcutaneous administration versus the IV based on co-primary endpoints. First, a pharmacokinetic endpoint that I will detail later, and second, of course, to make sure that you have the same rate of pathological complete remissions using these two different administrations. So the trial recruited close to 600 patients. It still has a quite short follow-up, as you can see, but most patients went to surgery. So here you see the results in terms of the primary, the co-primary endpoints and the secondary endpoints. Starting with pharmacokinetics, so the concentration trough levels pre-cycle eight were compared and then there was a geometric mean ratio developed, and you see that uh, you get somewhat higher concentration trough levels with the sub-Q administration. The ratio is 1.3, but the trial is successful because the lower limit of the confidence interval, 1.24, is higher than the pre-specified non-inferiority margin of 0.8. In terms of efficacy, primary endpoint was the pathological complete response in breast. You see that it was slightly better with the subcutaneous administration, and again, the trial was considered successful based on the uh, statistical hypothesis that was put forward. In terms of secondary endpoints, from a pharmacokinetic point of view, the area under the curve are very similar with the two administrations, and total PCRs are very close as well. In terms of side effects, there are slightly more side effects with the sub-Q administration. You see that the red and pink side effects relate to sub-Q administration and the blue to the IV, so there were slightly more serious adverse, adverse events. But in this trial, there were very few cardiac events. So you see some numerical differences, but nothing that seems to be really worrisome. Nevertheless, I think we will have to continue to follow these patients long term. There is a slight worry, in my view, regarding obese women. So, as you can see here, uh, the odds ratio for pathological complete response for different quartiles of body weight uh, could perhaps suggest that in the really obese women, the subcutaneous administration could be slightly inferior. So, this is something to watch carefully. Now, there will be two ways of delivering subcutaneous herceptin. A very simple way, but cumbersome with a syringe uh, and a needle. But the company is developing a very interesting single-use injection system. And there are currently trials ongoing, like the Safe Heart trial, a large study, where there will be a comparison between these two ways of delivering subcutaneous trastuzumab. There is also an interesting trial where the patient preference for the IV versus the sub-Q will be checked in the trial shown uh, on the left. I think I will stop here. Of course, I want to uh, thank my, the many colleagues of the Breast International Group that have worked with me on the HERA trial and show you that we occasionally have snow also in Brussels. Thank you very much. <laughs>